people have been very hospitable to us, kind of walking in cold off the street. Um, They're very patient with, with us. Yeah. Very patient yeah. with us when we don't quite do things uh, the way that Father Bill would. <laughs> in a in a light way, this is the Episcopalian way of doing it. This is the Lutheran <laughs> way of doing it. Let's see what should we do? You know, I had an interesting uh, moment with a guy last night who was. Uh, introducing himself to me he said you see me at church all the time but we really haven't had a chance to talk and so we were talking in the office last evening and he said some things about himself and and then he said um, and uh, he, he said I'm, I'm a little right of Attila the Hun and I said well if you haven't figured out I'm a little left of Bernie <laughs> and he just smiled and said and and I and I still like you <laughs> And part of the problem for the church is that for a lot of years we have promoted kind of this notion that there's one answer to any theological question rather than multiple answers to a theological question. And so there's this tendency in the church that we have, de we have defined orthodoxy, we've defined what's the right answer. If you're not with us on that, then you're against us. Mm -hmm. And the, either on my side or the other side, um, you know, um, another preacher, not us, uh, does this famous uh, sermon where she basically answers a lot of the theological questions by saying, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Because the backdrop of that is, yes, I know the one answer, and if you don't agree with me, you're going to hell. I think, and both of us are very well aware of that in our own presentations, so that we make sure that people know uh, that there's room for questions, there's room for doubt, that, that that's a good thing uh, to advance the faith that you're able to ask questions and not be fearful of that kind of stuff or fearful of I each other. I think it's extremely important <clears throat> in the church that we create an environment where um, the dialogue can be ongoing. And so to say you're wrong and I'm right and therefore we can't talk does not keep the dialogue going at all. Yeah. Uh, but to say, you know, as the church has done in the ecumenical movement and, you know, this partnership, we have a lot more in common than we have that separates us. And so let's talk about those things that are in common. And if we can firm those up, then maybe we're a little bit more open to talk about the things that are divisive. Um, I shared with the congregation here in a sermon not long ago, um, you know, being a black person, I have to ask myself, you know, what did I miss that I thought we had moved so far only to discover with, you know, the last year and a half or two years or so that we really haven't moved very far at all. Um, and yet I, you know, I come to a place like Christ Church and people are so open to learn and to be gracious and to experience what who we are um so i i have to believe that you know there is hope and there is room for moving in the direction i would like for us to go yeah for me it says something about the importance of finding in your community what it is your church can do and be mm -hmm. rather than just replicating some denominational model from 1622, you know, and I and I say that about our own denomination, Lutherans as well. Um, that's an issue, you know. Our church was born in the 16th century. It seems sometimes that some of them are still there. Um, so, can you be Episcopalian and be vibrant in a community? Absolutely. This is a church that is an example of that.